what's up today we'll be going over fix 45 now this is really similar to the problem right before fix 34 except for a small detail so in fix 34 you'll notice that the problem explicitly states every three has a number after it that is not a three and the important part a three appears in the array before any four this is important because that means that you only once you find the three, you only really need to check for the fours by looking at the numbers after the three. You don't need to be worrying about the numbers before the three. But in fix 45, the difference is that the problem says you can um the problem says that the five can appear anywhere inside the original array which makes the problem a little more complicated because now we need to check for um we need to check for fives before the fours as well as after the fours so the best way to do this is to split the problem up into two parts so first going through the array we'll be looking for missing fives uh, a missing five will define as a five that does not have a four right before it so going through the array we'll look for a missing five if we do find a missing 5, then we'll look for a missing 4. A missing 4 will define as a 4 that does not have a 5 right after it. So, we'll start off by, create, uh, by creating a for loop that runs throughout the array. Once you create the for loop, you need to check if the number you're looking at is 5. Now you also need to check if the number right before, so the index i minus 1, is not equal to 4, because that's what we defined as a missing 5. However, we also need to check if the number is 5 and the index we're checking is 0. So we need to check if the number we're looking for, we're looking at is a 5 and there's no 4 before it and we need to check if the number is a 5 and it's the first number inside the array remember array um arrays indices always start at 0 now the reason we need to check if the index is 0 is because if the index is 0 so for example in this first array we're looking at this first 5 right here at index 0 if the index is 0 there's no index negative 1 to look at. So we need to make sure that we include that inside the if statement. Now, if we do find a missing 5, then we'll save the position of that 5 as position 5. Now, once we find a missing 5, we'll create a second for loop, let's use the variable j, and we'll run through the array again. However, this time we're looking for a missing 4, which is a 4 that does not have a 5 right after it. Now, if we do find a missing 4, so if nums at j is equal to 4 and nums at j plus 1, is not equal to 5. So if we do find a missing 4, then we'll create a temporary integer value called temp. And we'll set it equal to the number at j plus 1. We'll set it equal to the number right after the 4. Now the reason we need to do this is because we're changing the number right after the 4. We're changing it into 5. And then using the, the position 5, the position of 5 that we saved earlier, we're going to take the number at that position and we're going to set it equal to the temporary value we saved. And then once we do that, we can just break out of the for, the for loop. Once you finish going through both for loops, all you need to do is return nums. Now there's a few 
possible problems I'd like to address. So first the break statement. This uh, You'll need to notice that this break statement here only breaks out of this inner for loop. This break statement does not break out of this entire thing. Now, just remember that break statements only apply to the loop that um, that includes them essentially. So this small for loop does include the break statement, but this big for loop does not. And the reason this is really important is because if this break statement were to imply were to apply to this entire thing, we'd only really be checking for the first pair of four and five. Now the second possible issue I can see is that looking at, at this first for loop here, we check for i minus one, and looking at the second for loop here, we check for j plus one. Now, shouldn't that mean that we should change the boundaries on these for loops in order to ensure that the, in the index we're checking doesn't go out of bounds? Now, the reason this is okay in this case is because of our if statements. Now, since we are already addressed um, the i in this uh, the i in this for loop right here, we can look at the j in this for loop right here. Now the reason it's okay to go up to nums dot length, even though we're checking for j plus one in this case, is because the problem says that every every four has a number after it that is not a four, right here. So because it says that, we're guaranteed that a four will not be the last number inside the array, which is why it's okay to say j can go up to Length. Now, if you run this and return the array, you'll see that there are a few problems. Now, it says that the error is an array out of bounds exception, negative one. Same here and same here. Now, the reason why is because of this if statement right here. Now, what we're checking for here is a missing five. We're checking if the number we're looking at is a 5, and if the number before is not a 4. However, we first need to be checking for this before we check for this. Now, as Java reads this if statement from left to right, it'll look at this part before it looks at this part. So, for example, going through this first array, which you can see caused an error here, you'll see that as i is equal to zero right here, you'll see that it does in, it does in fact um, look at this if statement and nums at i is equal to five, nums at zero is five, but nums at i minus four, at nums at i minus one is impossible to check because i minus one does not exist. While we did code for that right here, we can see that because Java checks this statement first, it will still consider it an out of bounds exception. So what we need to do here to fix this problem is check if the five you're looking at is at index zero before you check if there's a four before the five. And that way, everything will work.